Everybody loves a Friday podcast. How what episode is this, Brad? It's like eleven thousand three hundred and something or whatever. I think. Uh, <laughs> hold on, we will get an AccuWeather official reporting here once this page refreshes. It's this is a huge number, eleven hundred something, something like that. Eleven hundred and seventy-five. Yeah. So eleven hundred and seventy-five mornings, you and I have sat here at nine o'clock in the morning to record a podcast, and and eleven hundred and seventy-five times you've asked me if I'm ready. Eleven hundred and seventy-five <laughs> times I've said I am. And I got to tell you, I was not ready. I don't know why I said yes. Yeah, I was. I was going to say of the eleven hundred and seventy-five times, I would say maybe we'll say fifty percent. You were actually ready. <laughs> <laughs> I am. Like, um, yeah. I mean, part look. Part of it's absolutely team's fault. Um, I plugged in my Xbox wireless controller to charge it overnight, and obviously, it sees it as some kind of an audio mm-hmm. device, so it wants to use it for both speakers and headphone, uh, which is hilarious. Uh, so that happened, and then I hadn't plugged in my headphones, which are wired, and obviously the thing <laughs> turned into like a little origami thing. Like it took me a minute to untangle it. So uh, good morning. Anyway, speaking of controllers, the mm-hmm. custom controller I ordered for my daughter came in. Uh, oh, nice. Way faster than as they... did my socks for my sister. <laughs> Curious juggling, you know, complexity things. Uh, yeah. Like way fat. I mean, you can't order one now and get it for Christmas, but it said originally three to four weeks and it came in two. Yeah, nice. Which basically means the order went in, it was assembled and probably shipped like three, four days later. So, right, right. Good. Yeah, looks great. It was a little dirty actually, which was a little odd. I opened it up. I'm like, yeah, it was dirty. Almost looked like pencil shape, not like pencil, like graphite, uh, I just, guess. Yeah, maybe there's some, uh, what do you call it? Like, uh, use like a little tool to. A Dremel or something. I, to, I don't know. Shave off the little, you know, manufacturing bits that aren't wearing clay clean or whatever. I, I just polished it with a microfiber cloth and it came right off. There you go. Slightly less. No, I'm saying it. maybe they used. A, oh, a, I was it. like, no, I, it's a little extreme to take out a Dremel no, to no, get rid no, of some no, dirt. Of course, no, no. I mean, I don't mean you did it. Like in other <laughs> words, wherever they make these things, like you know, they have to dip all the bits in paint or yeah, however yeah. they make these things. I don't. I don't think they paint them. Yeah, I don't. Well, right, I don't either. So, but. But, you know, there's a manufacturing process, yes, 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 and yes. so it has some kind of a seam where yeah. they must have to trim off the the bits, the giblets. The giblets. <laughs> I don't know. Speaking of, of control panel giblets, they're, I don't know, how many years are we into this now? I guess it started well, with Windows, Windows 10. 8, right? Like Windows, 10, Windows 8 had a Did it? Yeah. settings app, I think. We'll just round up and say Windows 10. So they've been working on this since 2015, since I know that date off the top of my head. Uh, July of 2015. Yep. And we're, we're getting more bits from control panel into the into the settings. It's yeah, this probably is like big three big revisions people. away. Yeah. yeah, it's fine. I mean, I, I actually, you know, every once in a while, though, there's, um, there's a big one, right? Mm-hmm. And one of the big ones that's coming, and we probably won't see this in Windows 11 until, you know, next year, but... They're going to disallow the uninstallation, uninstall of applications through Control Panel. That that's a big, that's a big one, you know. Because right now it's it's a uh, it's the uh, mm-hmm. Forrest Gump box of chocolate experience when you go right click something and say uninstall. There's all different things that could happen there. Yeah, it takes you, know? you to that old mm-hmm. interface and yeah, if it's a desktop app, usually right. So I'm curious how that's going to work. I mean, yeah. well, it'll probably work the same way, I guess. So this, you'll see a list, you'll choose it, and then you'll, it will probably still have to trigger that desktop wizard that, mm-hmm. you know, however, whatever tech they use to create the app, right? But it's still, that's interesting. Yeah, that is interesting. Almost as interesting as Microsoft continuing to block updates or whatever the, the link workarounds for Edge. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> like this is—it's a tough one. It's a tough one. Is it? It's a tough one for me. I mean, oh yeah, I was like, for, I was like, this I mean, is there's, this is where people. Blah, blah, blah. Who, I can't yeah. talk. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, well, I, look, I you know, we asked Chris Capasell about this on uh, Windows Weekly the other day, and I, I I I think there's a balancing act that has to happen between Microsoft's corporate ambitions and sanity uh the user experience or whatever or, or the expectations of a user who has selected a default browser and is surprised to see edge come up in certain conditions i 
uh, Mary Jo has said this, and uh, I think Chris basically said the same thing. But you know, I, I, the devil's advocate ar argument here is honestly, if uh, you're running the you know the future update to Windows 11 where there is a set as default button, and and it, it does associate the two most common web-related file uh, types and the two most common web-related protocols with the browser of your choice. And so if you click on a hyperlink in an email, no matter which application you're using or whatever, the, your browser will open. Like, that's true. And then the kind of esoteric times when it doesn't happen, uh, Cortana Start Search, which to me, honestly to me is the tough one, um, is maybe the most problematic one. And um, the widgets thing will launch Edge, and and the the argument there is they're looking they're, they've created a complete end to end experience, and uh, they can, because they can't control the browser that might pop up something bad something something I know I know I I yeah. look I could ex honestly Cortana which I don't think anyone uses and widgets which I think most people will try once and reject immediately hmm. is not that big of a deal um, Star Search. Uh, I, that's a weird one. Um, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, 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 there are people, look, anyone, again, playing devil's advocate here, could make this argument that because there's this chain of things that happen, it's possible that a, an application like Edge Deflector, which we just, what, we just trust this guy on GitHub, be like he's just a guy. Mm -hmm. um, anyone could write an app like that that does bad things, right? So you're, you're circumventing a, like a, communication protocol in a web browser. I mean, it's, there's a potential for malicious code there. So, but yeah, I, um, I still, I'm not comfortable with this at all. <laughs> I, 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 I think you select a default browser and that's the browser. You, yep. I, I don't care that I can't uninstall Microsoft's browser. I don't even, I don't dislike Microsoft's browser per se, although I'm not happy with all the crap they've mm -hmm. added to it, but I don't mind it being on the disc, you know, I understand that the background rendering engine is used for all kinds of different things. I get it. Like I'm not, there's no problems there, but I, I don't like the user experience where a, a thing I have, I've explicitly said, I don't want to use right. pops up um, because that's just Microsoft overriding my choice. And I think that's the central issue for people that are upset by this. Yeah. It took us 14 versions of iOS. I think it was 14 to be able to, Unscrew yeah. up that OS, and then soon as, it's like as soon as that was done, Microsoft now's our chance. Yep. I'm like, well, by the <laughs> way, that's but that's the that's the argument too, right? Yep. That's the other devil's argument you can make. I use an Android phone, so uh, I haven't, but I, I did. I have in the past. What if what if I chose Edge on on Android? And I say I want Edge to be my mm -hmm. default browser. Okay, well, it works much like I just described in Windows 11. Honestly, it does pop up most of the time, but the truth is, Chrome is still on that thing, and Chrome will still appear. Yep. Uh, from time to time. If you use the Discover feed, which I use every single day, that's Chrome. And uh, it doesn't matter that I might want to use some other web browser. Like that thing is going to, that's Google's end-to-end -end experience. That's the same argument they would make. Now, are they really doing it for slightly nefarious reasons because they want to deliver ads and tracking for advertisers and all that stuff? Yeah, probably. It's Google. They're evil. But that's the argument you can make. Is Microsoft doing anything that different from um other platform makers, uh, you know, and it's not, it's, there's no, there's no pat answer to this. I, there's no one can say anything where the other side will say, Oh yeah. Okay. That makes mm -hmm. sense. That's fine. You know, and that's, the, that's what makes it tricky. Have you watched any of the uh, Xbox docu? -series? I have watched all of it, Brad. And I oh, I've only watched this. the first one. Don't ruin it. <laughs> I'm not going to ruin it, but I, I'll just say this. Um, one of the things I think I said to you on Monday was the reason to watch this is, well, you know, you'll have Xbox, whatever, but um, there might be little factoids in there, right? Mm -hmm. um, there is a moment where Phil Spencer discusses how badly PS4 outsold Xbox One, and it is way uglier hmm. uh, than anyone ever thought. It's way worse. And, but here's my problem with it. They needed one more episode. Um, they go from Xbox One, they, they show on screen... No, they don't actually. They never discuss Xbox One Series S or X or Xbox, sorry, the Xbox One, X, one yeah. S or X ever. Uh, they they talk about the mistake they made with Connect, and then they sold the version of the console without Connect. But they never talked about the the midstream things they did to improve the platform over time, which I th think is important. Yeah. They the the Series X and S stuff in Xbox Game Pass is squeezed into the Xbox One episode. That 
all should have been the ne- there should have been one more episode that was just what I would call the current generation, which mm-hmm. is Xbox Game Pass plus these new consoles and how they've you know because yeah. they talk you know they bought pl- they bought uh, game uh, publisher game uh, studios Bethesda. yeah uh, many you know they talk about that stuff but they also uh, in uh, this uh, this doesn't spoil anything but one of the interesting things about Xbox is that. They were basically they 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 got off to a better they got off to a I'm sorry they started a year earlier on the Xbox 360 generation so they had a year in market with, before the PS3 appeared the PS3 came out of the gate hobbled because it was overpriced it was 500 bucks uh, it was like 200 dollars more than Xbox 360 it wasn't 100 it was like 200 more so for most of that generation the Xbox 360 actually was in first place well if you pretend we didn't exist, mm-hmm. by the way. <laughs> they, they never discussed that part of that. Mm-hmm. But what they do discuss erroneously, and I hate the way they said this, we basically won that generation. No, you didn't. Mm. You came in last in that generation. The we came in first by far. The mm. we outsold the other two combined, if I'm not mistaken. It was horrific. It was one-sided. But we're just going to pretend. They talk about we, but they never talk about how it blew away everything else. If you look at the, the the way the sales figures ended up, Sony sold more PS3s than Microsoft sold Xbox 360s at the end of the day. Now, it is fair to say, you know, over the first five years, seven years, however mm-hmm. long, yeah, I mean, Xbox 360 was in first place, but it, compared to the PS3. Yeah. But they didn't win. Like, actually, the, the final tally, you came in last. And they're acting like this was the biggest victory they've ever had and how the Xbox One completely screwed it up, which... It did screw it up, you know. Yeah, it kind of did. A little bit. Don Matrix in it, which is interesting. Um, a lot of the a lot of the guys from back in the day are in it, and uh, interesting perspectives. It's it's. Mm-hmm. Um, I said this to Mary Jo. You care about Xbox, so you're going to watch it anyway. And I yep. think a lot of people listening to this probably do too. It, if you care about Microsoft, but you like video games, I don't care. You need to watch this. Mm-hmm. It's because it's about Microsoft, yeah. and it's fascinating. Um, I mean, I've read so many books about Xbox, and uh, the early days, I think, are, are well documented. But, and that's the thing; like, they do a great job of documenting the early stuff. I, I, I really want more from the more recent stuff. Mm-hmm. They really could have done one more episode, but it's great. It's, it's great. Yep, I'm almost done with the Halo campaign too. I'm not going to spoil any of that either. But, um, yeah, pretty good. Well, yeah, good. How pretty long good. do you think? How long? Well, I don't even know. Like been out about a week. Yeah, <laughs> yes, right. Week. I mean, I haven't played the past couple days. I played a little bit last night. Um, it's got yeah, some length to it. It's not super repetitive. There's definitely some. Although every time I'm in one of these things, I'm like, who designed? Like, where's the interior designer? Like, look at all this wasted space. Yeah, <laughs> it's just yeah, yeah. caverns of nothing and just sure walking through. And uh, the story's pretty good. It kind of maybe explains why Cortana's not in Windows 11. It doesn't, but it, <laughs> but it. I like that you know there's a there's a Halo is it's like Star Wars you know you it 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 has these familiar themes that mm-hmm. pop up from time to time. It's kind of like when you watch into James Bond movie and all of a sudden it's like darn out and you know like okay this is gonna be an action thing you know like Halo you'll 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 kick into some action sequence and it'll be like yeah you know the music yep and it's 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 so up there with any pop science fiction movie stuff like it's it's it really. Uh, you know they're making a, t- a TV series right now, right? I, and yeah. it looks like it's going to be pretty good. I hope it is. We'll I mean, it look there's there's an epic nature to this story that mm-hmm. I think is uh, is nice. Yeah the the last level is very much exactly what you just explained. Okay. Is yeah, I would imagine. Like yeah. it it's. I'm That's not gonna say the other thing. So I'm what sorry to interrupt. Uh, Halo figures prominently in that power on thing and explains the success of the uh, such as it is the console. You have to have that one game that people. You know, and it's funny we don't do this anymore. But you have to buy this console to pay play this game. Mm-hmm. Halo is intrinsically connected to the success of the Xbox. And the thing they said, which I completely forgot about, was Halo was a trilogy. Yeah, you know. But they of course, also thought it was was not going to be the hero title when they originally launched yeah. Xbox either. By the way, there I don't were, know if yeah, that's in there yeah. or not. But yeah, there, there were there were other titles that were kind of a big deal. I think. Um, I'm going to forget the name because it predates Forza, but it was like a Gran Turismo uh, competitor. Oh, Project Gotham Racing. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was like that was like one of the key ones. Uh, I think even like Cameo. Oh, maybe Cameo was Xbox 360. I don't know. But um, 
but it became the console for shooter fans. Mm -hmm. And like one of the big deal, like they one of the things. Again, it's not a spoiler, but like when they first showed off Halo, they told the guy on stage from Bungie, put the angle the controller so people can see you using it. It's important. That has to be in the frame all the time because no one believes you can make a successful shooter with a controller because mm. it's not going to be precise enough. And um, that that you know Halo was it is what made it happen. And then mm. you know Call of Duty came to the console, et cetera. You know, so sorry. I'm <laughs> I'm really excited about this documentary. It's, it's, I know. It's I watched the first I, one. I just watch it again. It's like fan. It's really good. I watched the first one, and I will probably watch a bunch of it this weekend, or at least it, definitely over the Christmas break, because I've got some time yeah. off and yep. things. There's going to be nothing worth, going on. Like I said, anyone interested in Microsoft all should watch this. Yeah. Just like everybody Six. should watch all of our episodes of 1,175 episodes of First Ring Daily. 11,300, whatever it is. 